Well, hello everybody, it's Dan, your friendly fishmonger from dansfish.com. And today I'm going to do a fish room tour, show you all the aquariums, what's in them. It's a big fish room, so it could take a little while. So get comfy, get a snack, and uh, let's strap in for the long haul. Let me give you a quick kind of overview. This is what the fish room looks like. So we've got all these 75 gallon tanks. This is a 125 gallon and a 100 gallon aquarium there. Bunch more 75 gallon tanks there. A desk area, a freezer, a work table over there, kind of the heating furnace area here. More 75 gallon aquariums, 20 longs. And then down here, this is my quarantine rack. These are all 30 breeders. And this is my breeding rack. These are all five and a half gallons here. And then down on the end is like live food and stuff. So that's the, that's the big picture. I'm turning out some lights so that uh, we don't get as much glare, uh, sorry, as we start looking at these tanks. So every light is off that's not directly over a tank. Let's start looking at some aquariums. So let's start here. This is the 125 gallon. This is the aquarium that is behind me when I do my live streams. I do a live stream every Wednesday at 7 o'clock p.m. Mountain Time on YouTube uh, at the Dan's Fish YouTube channel. So you're welcome to join me, 7 p.m. Mountain Time on Wednesdays. But this is kind of the background tank. It's got a lot of silver hatchet fish in there. I got them because I thought they'd be a nice complement to these koi angels, and they are. They kind of group up in school, and they have a different kind of swimming and behavior to them than the angels. So there's a nice contrast, I think, between those silver hatchets and these koi angels. That's the majority of the tank. On the bottom, we have a whole bunch of skunk quarries, Corridoris arcuatus, and uh, these are fantastic. They are a fun, fun fish. And they look good on a light substrate like this. If you have these guys on a dark substrate, then they can be a little difficult because their body will darken. Not difficult, but they won't look as good because their body will darken and then that awesome skunk stripe just is hardly visible. That's how dark their body gets. So on a light substrate like this kind of light sand, they do great. Um, I had to solve this tank a while ago because uh, some previous fish I had and it had an issue. It was a few months ago actually and the plants are still recovering. Um, there's a little bit of java fern, I'm sorry, java moss there on that piece of wood, some a sword tail, I'm not sure which species, some Ludwigia and some dwarf sag here and down here and then some water sprite up here. It was all knocked back super hard by the uh, salt that I put in here but it's starting to grow back now and everyone's doing fantastic. There's a couple miscellaneous fish in here, like this uh, Roseline Barb right here. He's got a funky face. He's got like a deformed squished bulldog type little Fu Manchu looking face uh, with his little whiskers. <laughs> it's really cute. But I didn't want to sell a deformed fish, so I put him in here. He can live out his life here. There's a couple big Siamese algae eaters. There's three of those. Those were given to me by uh, Fish Guru. That's Thomas at Fish Guru Aquatics. Thanks, Thomas. And then I've got some of these plecos back there. There's one back there. These are starlight plecos. I believe they're L182. Um, there's two, L182 and L183, that are very similar. This is the one that loses the white seam on the caudal fin as it gets older. And then a steel blue apisto right here. That's about it for that tank. Let's go down here. This is the 100 gallon. I have a massive clump of water sprite here and so it's blocking the light on a good third of the tank it's this big old clump right here just a ton of water sprite which is great for the fish which is why I keep it there but these are a bunch of pandagara which are a fantastic algae eater a good substitute for like a bristlenose pleco or something personable little fish hardy peaceful I, I mean, and they, they get neat little color patterns to them, little pandas. There's also some peacock gudgeons in here. Here's one right here. There's a couple 
uh, that have colored up into nice males, but they're not out right now. Um, oh, here, here's one. He's not got his color on right now, but they frequently do. They color up really nice. And then these are a goby out of China. It's called a Chinese blue belly goby. It's different than the blue belly goby out of Indonesia. It's a completely different species, completely different genus, I think. And they get that nice blue on the face and um, kind of a blue stripe down their body. Really interesting little stiffodon type goby, although I'm not quite sure what species it is. I've never seen these before or since. This is the only time I've ever seen these Chinese blue belly gobies. So, don't know exactly what they are, but they are different. They're a different species than the uh, normal, like, neon blue stiffodon that's in the hobby. They have a lighter blue stripe, and it's just a different pattern. So, neat little rare goby in there, along with the other fish. So, that's kind of the, the show tank section. Then we get into the bread and butter tanks. These are all these 75s. Here's the first one. This is full of threadfin rainbows or featherfin rainbows. Erythrania werneri is the species. One of my favorites, they are like little hummingbirds. They have these amazingly long fins and they often will display, they probably won't do it right now with the camera kind of scaring them, but when they display they look like hummingbirds. They flicker those little fins super rapidly and do this little dance and it is one of the most stunning sights in nature. They are absolutely stunning, beautiful, beautiful little fish. And they don't get too big, maybe an inch and a half. I mean, inch 75 maybe, 1.75 inches. Okay, what we're going to do is look, show you the rest of the tanks. I'm going to do all the top tanks, and then we'll come back around and do all the bottom tanks. So here's the next tank over. These are a cool killifish. These are called Aphiosimian caliurum. Aphiosimian is the genus. Caliurum is the species name. They're a stunning fish. I brought these in myself from Nigeria. Um, and they are from Ogun in Nigeria is where they were collected. Anyway, this is a male. As you can see, they get nice red dots all over the body and then those beautiful colors on the tail and the unpaired fins. This is a female. The females have a bright blue eye, but they're pretty much a, a brown fish, which is typical of killifish. So, I have a nice group of them in here, and they're doing absolutely fantastic. On the bottom of the tank, we have some Corydoras trilineatus, which in the hobby we call the Julie Cory. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much the tank. This big clump of Java moss keeps everybody, you know, kind of happy. Everyone can hide if they need to and stuff. And so that's, that's typical of my aquariums. Usually there's some water sprite on the top. This one has a massive clump of water sprite, but right now it's uh, getting the algae eaten off by the scuds. It got covered in algae. And then some java moss on the bottom on a lot of the tanks, like this one. Next tank over, sorry for the glare, but it's a working fish room. So like these lights, if I put the lights directly on top of the tank, then I'm always gonna have to be shifting them back and forth and dropping them and removing them anytime I need to get in the tank and work on the tank. So the lights are all, you know, a, about a foot above the tank just to make it easy and efficient to work in here, to feed, to catch fish for shipping. I sell a lot of fish. Um, I guess for, for those that might not know, I, I sell pretty much every fish that you're going to see in this video is for sale at dansfish.com. Uh, that's how I make my living. I sell, I'm a fishmonger. <laughs> I sell fish online at dansfish.com, which is hosted at getgills.com. So, if you're someone who has fish for sale, please check out getgills.com and you can create your own store there and have it hosted there. And your products will be listed along with everyone else's products in kind of this community marketplace. So if you only have a few things, combine your few things with my things and everyone else's things and, and suddenly we have this big you know, marketplace that attracts lots of buyers. So if you want to buy or sell fish, getgills.com is a great place to do that. Anyway, here's the next tank. Um, this has, they look kind of similar because they each have a dark line going through the body, but there are some uh, Emperor Carey Tetras, one of my favorite Tetras because they get that nice, nice purple lavender color, which hopefully is going to show up on this video. And then several Madagascar rainbows, which some of them, some of the males are starting to color out really nicely and get that, that red on them, which you see there. And then the females are, you know, lack the red. 
So, um, I actually had a customer that wanted some of these, and I checked the tank, and I didn't have males, and then a few of them colored up, so got some males ready to go. So I can sell you pairs of those if you want. Anyway, again, it's kind of the Java moss on the bottom, water sprite on the top, and then filtration in my fish room, I keep it really simple. Here's a sponge filter and a box filter. The sponge filter is for biological filtration. That's where the bacterial colony lives that takes care of any ammonia. And this is uh, for mechanical filtration. So all that white filter floss in there sucks particles and dust and you know detritus out of the water to help keep the water clear. Uh, it's never perfectly clear, but you know, does an okay job. Okay, let's go down here. So the crown jewel of this aquarium are these fish. These are Achille fish. They're Aplicylus dei. They're uh, native fish, fish to Sri Lanka. And they're a great surface dweller. The females, like this one, get those black bars that kind of go halfway up the body, um, on, the, on the back half of the body there. Those are females. The males are the other ones with that long orange and yellow extended anal fin and that beautiful coloration on the caudal fin. Neat killifish, kind of hard to get. Um, I'm really lucky to have this group. I have had these several times in my life and it took me, um, I had them a year ago and I haven't been able to find them since. So I'm glad that I could get another group in. Let's see if this guy will let us get a nice close up of him. And then these guys here. Anyway, they're an egg layer. They're not an annual species. So they don't have the short lifespan that everyone is afraid of in killifish. In fact, none of the killifish that I'm showing you, um, those Aphiosimian caliurum or these or any of the others are annuals. They're all non-annuals, so they'll live a nice long time for you. There's some more Emperor Carey tetras in here, which I use as dithers, and one single <laughs> uh, Colombian blue red tetra that, you know, happened to be in the bag when they sent it to me, so it's living in there. And then the other thing we have in here are uh, some apistos. These are steel blue apistos back there. And they get a bright blue face. Kind of a cool little fish. Next tank over. More Aphiosimian caliurum. I, when, when you import fish, when you bring in fish on your own without going through a wholesaler or a transship or anything, you have to do thousands and thousands and thousands of fish. So I have three tanks of these. Um, I tried to get this and Aphiosimian australi. They shorted me the australi and substituted more of these in place of the missing australi. So I ended up with so many of these, but I'm okay with it because they're hardy, they're beautiful. Uh, for If you've never kept killifish before, this is a good one to start with. It's they eat flakes and pellets just fine. They like, you know, give them some live food or some frozen food occasionally as a snack. But they're absolutely stunning and hardy and easy to breed. So that's what's in most of this tank. There's a few epiplates that are here. Um, these are from Akayo in Nigeria. Don't know the species, but the location is Akayo that came in with the bag. So that's that tank. Next tank over. Earlier today, this had a whole, whole bunch of guppies that were breeding out in here. I removed them, um, and I've moved a bunch of female, mostly female, there's a few males in there, but female thread fins in here to try to fatten them up. When the female thread fins come in, they're usually very emaciated. They come in super, super skinny. So these are recovering, getting fattened up. It takes a while. They're naturally slender fish, and so, um, yeah, hopefully I'll be able to offer pairs soon, but for right now I just have males until this group gets, as you can see, they need to get some weight on them. So we're working on that. And then some Siamese algae eaters. Almost every tank has some Siamese algae eaters in it, just to obviously help with algae. Okay, next row. This tank is pretty much empty, just waiting for new fish to come out of quarantine. I've got a few uh, drape fin barbs in here. Actually, I think I just have the one left in this tank. I have a, another tank that's full of them. That's a big boy. And then some uh, headstanders in there. There's also some, uh, let's see if I can find one. A few quarries and some, there's some better rubra in there, but they're not coming out to play right now. So let's move on. Peacock gudgeons, beautiful, hardy fish that I love. 
I've got a pair of them shacked up in that pipe right there. I don't know if you can just, if I get over at an angle, we might be able to just see a head or a tail peeking out in that pipe. So it's this pipe right here, right above my fingernail. Um, and they're constantly breeding for me. They're, I find them to be hardy and beautiful and kind of amazing. So yeah, peacock gudgeons. I've also got some Epistos in here. These are Episto uh, Jeffra, I believe is how you say it. Um, and I like these guys a lot. You know, I, I like designer Pistos too, like the Cockatoides and the McMasteri and the uh, Agazizii and all that. With the all the different flashes and double reds and triple reds and, and all that. But I also like just a nice, as nature intended it, standard Episto. And that's what these are. And the species, uh, Epistogramma I, Jeffira, I believe, is or Jeffra. Anyway, look at those guys dance. <laughs> Having <laughs> a little, this is my territory dispute going on here, I think. Um, and then up top we have a few left of these half beaks. Uh, these are platinum half beaks. Got a couple of them left. Used to have a ton in here, but I've sold most of them out. I've got two other tanks of them though, so don't worry if you want them. I can definitely sell you some half beaks. Uh, such a unique fish. One of my favorites of all time. They are a live bearer. Like, uh, like guppies and platies and, and sore tails and all that. And if you buy them, I'm probably not going to sell you out of this tank because these ones are pretty old. I've had these for several months. They're getting a little long in the tooth. But I have two other tanks of them that I can, I can sell you. So you might see some in here that are looking, looking a little old. But, you know, that's what happens when fish get old. Um, next tank over. These are a wild type of Hellerai, uh, you know, swordtail. These are spotted green swordtails, the wild form, which I really like. Again, I like designer fish too, and I get them frequently, but every now and then it's nice to get a, a good wild, natural looking fish. And let's see if I can find, like, there, there's a male. They get a nice orange dorsal, yellow to orange dorsal, a lot of yellow in the tail. Um, here's another one. And that's the dominant male. That's why his dorsal is so much, so much brighter. Anyway, I won't follow them too much because I don't want to make you seasick. All right, next we're going to go down these rows. In here we have uh, these are croaking garamis, which are very similar to sparkling garamis or those you know pygmy garamis. Same kind of behavior and body shape and a lot of similar coloration, but they get a lot bigger, which which I like. They get about twice as big. The literature says up to three inches. I, I don't know if that's true. <laughs> Most I've ever seen is about two inches. But uh, yeah, neat little peaceful, very peaceful garami. There's also in here a few of these uh, female Limia perugiae. Next tank over, another killifish. These are golden wonders, um, which are just a Aplicylus lineatus is the species. This is the gold form of that species, which is big and bright and beautiful. Um, so yeah, if you want a hardy, super easy killifish, these are definitely that. Um, these will be ready to go in another week or so. I need to, you know, fatten these up and finish their kind of acclimation process and get them fully ready, but they're getting really close. They're gaining weight, they're settling in, they're eating flakes and pellets and stuff. Look at that guy. Anyway, not a rare fish by any means. This is one of the few killifish that's frequently available. Um, in pet stores and things, but a neat one. Uh, the crown jewel of this tank though, and I apologize, there's a little algae on the front of the glass here, a little patina of algae, are these guys. These are Melanotania sungur, which is a rainbow fish, which is uh, pretty rare in the hobby. I, I, they're difficult to find. These are little, so they haven't developed their full coloration yet, but you can see kind of the, the red coming in on that guy, on the anal fin. That's going to turn a bright red with a in that nice bright white margin on the second dorsal fin there. Um, anyway, they're going to color up into something stunning. They're still pretty young right now. That's that's how angelfish are. They don't get their full color until they get a little bigger. But uh, but this is a gem, and I am thrilled for someone to get them and get this kind of rare, neat color form in there. It's, it's a very different looking angelfish than most of the Melanotania with that uh, color pattern. Over here, these are Epiplates from Nigeria that I brought in. Um, 
We don't know the species. There's three different species that they could be. So instead of telling you the wrong species, I'm identifying them by location. So this is called Epiplates species Achaio. And um, their colors are beautiful but subtle, and I don't know how well they're going to come across on camera, but this guy in person looks pretty darn good. I'm trying to chase him without making you all seasick with camera motion, but see, he's got a lot of blue and purple on him. He's got a blue lip, uh, blue on his anal fin there, um, and they get that bold kind of striping pattern on them. There's also a colony of Limia perugia in here, and some random Aphiosumum caliurums that that happened to come in <laughs> in the same bag with the Epiplates when they were shipped to me. Um, and some Siamese algae eaters. Bunch of Java moss, uh, killifish love this stuff, and a bunch of water sprite up there, which makes them very happy. Next row over. Okay, another tank of Aphiosumum caliurum with a few Epiplates species Achaio up top. Um, so we won't dwell on this tank too much, but there is another kind of fish in here. This is a different killifish. Um, this is a Chromaphio simian bivitatum, and I, I'm, for, I'm blanking on the location, I'm sorry. Uh, but these are from Nigeria, and there's a specific collection point which I've forgotten. Um, but these are males, and when they spread that dorsal and anal fin, they are absolutely stunning because those fins are really big. Uh-oh, where'd they go? Um, and then here's the female. Oh, she darted away on me, did she? Let's see if I can find her without making anybody seasick here. No. Nope. Okay, well, there was a female. <laughs> um, I haven't listed them on the store because I just have two males and one female. And taking the photo and listing them and all that is a lot of work to just sell, you know, one reverse trio of fish. So if you're interested in that fish, just email me. Uh, I'll email you the price and we can kind of do that one off the books as opposed to doing a whole listing for them. But there they are again. There's a male. And I, well, I'm not going to be able to show you the female right now. Oh, yes, I can. Here she is. There is the female, similar to the male, but without the color on the fins and without the extended fins. She's got those black stripes on her body, though, which is really different for Aphiosumian type killifish. Most of them are just plain brown. So for a female killifish, that's actually rather pretty. Okay, next tank over. These are drape fin barbs. My favorite barb ever because they don't get too big. Two inches would be massive for these guys. I think the biggest one in here is probably an inch and three quarters, one and three quarters, 1.75 inches. And they get this huge dorsal fin, really big dorsal fin, which they frequently flare out because they display all the time. Um, stunning fish, don't get too big, and they're not like a lot of barbs, they're not as rambunctious. They aren't aggressive like a tiger barb or, or a lot of other barbs. And they don't swim, you know, super, super fast like Odessa barbs and things. So. These are much less likely to be a problem in a community tank. Some of the other barbs will outcompete other fish for food just because they're so fast, or even be just jerks and bite them and you know chow down on them. Not these. These are uh, an amazing community fish. And then with them are some. These are Burmese clouded archer fish, a freshwater archer fish. They're doing great in my soft water. I have very soft water here. Um, just naturally, that's how it comes out of the tap. But most archer fish I love but will never keep because I don't want to mess with brackish water. Um, these, however, are naturally from full fresh water and never need salty water in their environment. So these are fantastic for the person who wants archer fish but doesn't want to keep a brackish water tank. Just really, really cool fish. Uh, next tank over, ton of guppies. If you order mutt guppies from me or assorted guppies from me, this is probably the tank they're going to come out of. Tons of different flavors in here, guppies and endlers and all things in between. And then the other thing we have in here are these. These are Melanotania rubra vitata, which is commonly called the um, dwarf neon wapoga, dwarf neon red wapoga laser something like that. Um, 
These are full grown adults and they're too old to sell. I've had these for a year and a half or more and they were, you know, decent size when I got them. So I don't want to sell these because I don't think they're, they'll ship well. So those rainbows are kind of just living their life here. Uh, they're a little long in the tooth, but they're still beautiful and healthy and vibrant and absolutely stunning. I've raised several batches of them and sold them already. And then I moved on to other species, but this is the original kind of breeder colony. And then a random rainbow fish that came in on another shipment, I don't know what it is, but it's there. So if you live local, then I could get you some of these, but I'm not comfortable shipping them at that age. Okay. These are absolutely fantastic. One of the best small little nano fish ever. These are Pseudomugil luminatus. Um, often, they, they used to be called Pasci, or CF Pasci was kind of the species name, so they're still kind of known as Pasci in the hobby, in the trade. But look at them, they're like a Gertrude, but with tons of color. They have the little pom-pom fins, uh, the pectoral fins are tipped in like a bright orange, so as the males, on the males anyway, not the females, and so as the males swim around, you get that cheerleader effect, like they're waving pom-poms around. The same kind of effect you get with forcata rainbows or forktail rainbows, but or blue eyes, I guess, if you're a purist. But um, yeah, they're absolutely stunning. Fairly new to the hobby, in bright kind of neon red and orange colors with that bright glowing blue eyeball. Hopefully they're showing up well for you. And they're like, look at them, they're all out front. They're like, feed me, feed me, come on man, give me some food. So this batch is rock solid. These are really shaky when they're first imported, like a lot of blue eyes. But if you, you know, once you do the work to medicate them and get them all settled down, they turn into this. So these are rock solid. These are not gonna be shaky for you. I've already done the work and, and got through that. So these are gonna be hardy and I think do great for you. They eat flakes and pellets and everything else. Now they do tend to kind of stay in the upper third of the tank, so they're a pretty good surface dweller. Once the food drops to the bottom, they're less likely to go down and feed on it, which makes them great. I'm gonna put some like rosy loaches in the bottom of this tank, I think, because uh, it'll be a nice compliment. They won't outcompete each other that way. And look at that, that massive clump of jav uh, java moss, sorry, of water sprite. That thing just makes me happy. Fish love that stuff. This is a very special tank to me. This is a fish which is amazing, and I think more of us should keep it. This is Betta imbellus. So it's like the common domesticated Betta, which is Betta splendens, but these guys, this is a wild type Betta, it's a bubble nester, but it's peaceful, which is fantastic. You can keep big groups of these together. You can keep males together. There's a male right there, and he was just hanging out with that other male wherever he went. Um, these are the males. They don't get, you know, they aren't in veil tail or delta tail or half moon or anything like that. They're not a, a domesticated breed. This is a wild type fish, but they do get a little, you know, this is what a wild type kind of splendens would, would almost look like. They do get a, the males an elongated uh, dorsal fin and anal fin, but not, not the domesticated strain. So this is how they look, again, in the wild. And what I love about this fish is a lot of us love bettas and want to keep more than one together. And so we try sororities and all this stuff with the common betta splendens, the, the normal species. And often that doesn't turn out well. People even sometimes try to keep uh, males together um, just because they want to so bad and it doesn't turn out well. But this one does. This is a species where you can get several betta and bellas in a tank together keep them together and they'll get along just fine. There'll be a little bit of squabbling and sparring and all that, but they will coexist just fine, especially if there's some plants and hiding places and stuff. So if you've always wanted to keep a group of bettas, this is the one. This is very close to the domesticated betta species, but it's peaceful. Betta imbellus, check it out. And let's get close up if we can without making you guys too dizzy. The nice reds and blues coming through. That's how it all started, folks, before we bred the heck out of these types of fish. And this is kind of what they used to look like. Um, I want to show you this guy because he's absolutely stunning. Check him out. 
Anyways, um, if you do get these though, be aware, um, you should know that I'm not going to be able to sex them for you. I've got like two or three that are obvious males, but most of them aren't sexed out yet. They're still pretty small. So um, if you want to be able to breed them, get a big enough group, get like six, and then I'll send you some colorful ones and some dull ones, and you'll probably, probably end up with, uh, with a few pairs out of that. But there's only a couple in there that are obvious males. The rest have some, some growing and coloring up to do before I can really sex them for you. Next tank over, these are some black swords and they, they also have a brilliant green and bluish green aqua, aqua blue, I don't know what you call it, but blue green iridescence to them. So they're really cool fish. Um, they'll be for sale probably in a couple weeks once they settle in fully. They're still adjusting to uh, life here, but I think they're going to be absolutely stunning once they kind of settle in and fatten up that bright, bright kind of green iridescence, which probably isn't showing up on the camera, but trust me, it's there on that black body. Let's see if we can... I mean, you're getting hints of it probably, like on that guy, but it's much better in person. And then the angelfish in here, these are pretty special angelfish. These are one of the most recent color mutations, pattern mutations in angelfish. These are green giants and or Belgian giants or I'm sorry, green giants or Belgian greens and they get this bright kind of blue green iridescent color on them as well which I hope is showing up for the camera. Um, here, let's see if we can do you see that on them? It's like patches of, of bright blue green which is really really cool okay so that's it for the top 75 gallon level um, we're gonna come back around and show you all the tanks on the bottom but before we do that let's go over the 20 long show you what's in the breeding system and the quarantine system these are another fish that is near and dear to my heart this is Betta Cochina they they're a dwarf species kind of like a, a burgundy wine color uh, a deep red color on a on a really kind of dark body, I guess. And the males get this bright blue. Uh, I don't know if I can find one. The light's pretty subdued in this tank because it's got all this Java. Uh, J how do we say that? A uh, water sprite up top. But the males get this bright iridescent blue patch on the middle of their body. Um, I don't know if it's going to show up. Anyway, I've got a whole video on these, so if you want uh, details and close-up footage and to see the bright blue when they're, you know, in dominant coloration and stuff, uh, check out, oh, here's one, check out that video. See that bright blue patch on the kind of center of the body? The bright iridescent patch. They're fantastic. These fish are pretty hard to get. Um, they're a true black water species. They come from water that's like, in nature, like 3.5 to 4.5 pH, so acidic. And so they they can be really hard to adjust to captive conditions, but once they are, they're rock solid. So this is a chance to get a group that is rock solid. These guys have been adjusted over. Um, I think I lost, I, I got a couple hundred of them. I think I've had two die the first day or two that I got them and everyone else has been great so they're gonna be as as hardy as possible um, they're now acclimated to much harder water with a lot less acidity they're eating flake food they're eating pellets they're eating rapashi now um, they also like frozen and live food of course but these are fantastic and they're hard to get especially in good shape usually they come in in horrible shape and your typical importer, wholesaler, etc. Not to talk bad about anyone, but the fact is your typical commercial operation does not know how to uh, care for these guys to get them tough and hardy and ready to sell. So most people that get these have bad experience because they get fish that aren't ready to go. These are ready to go, I promise. I've, I've had them for over a month now and they're doing great. I've sold a lot of them. Everyone's having good luck with them. So Betta Cochina, 
nice hearty fish. These are a breeding project. These are my favorite endler. <laughs> um, these are Santa Maria endlers. So it's mostly females in here because it's a breeding group, but this is the males. I think there's three males in here. They're that dark, dark black back with that bright orange belly and then that uh, orange on the tail. I just think they're fantastic. And I don't, I mean, they call them Santa Maria endlers. I think they should be called like Halloween endlers or something, black and orange, but whatever, I didn't name them. I, it took me a year and a half to develop this strain to the point where they're breeding out pretty darn true and, um, and I'm satisfied that the, the strain is in good shape. So not every fish that comes out is exactly perfect, but pretty much all of them have the black and orange that you want. Um, some have not got as much, on some of them the orange on the tail doesn't extend all the way down the top and bottom length, but um, on most of them it does, and if it doesn't it's in the gene. So that's what I'm going for, but they're all coming out of Santa Maria's. I'm just working on perfecting the, the caudal fin a little bit, the coloration on that. Um, down here this is a scud culture. There'll be a bunch of them on this pumpkin here. Scuds are my secret weapon. They're fantastic for acclimating puffers and other hard to feed type of fish to captive conditions. So when puffers come in, they're super skinny. They don't know how to eat uh, the food we feed them usually and things like that. So uh, I use these and they, their hunting instinct on these is dialed in. The moment they see these, they go nuts and I can get them nice and fat and start transitioning them to uh, kind of captive foods once they've been on this for a little while and got settled in. So I love scuds. Okay, pardon the, hopefully you're not getting seasick here. Okay, up here, this is another colony of the Santa Maria Endlers that I'm breeding. There's a bunch of females, there's some babies, and um, where's my prize male? <laughs> he's in here earlier today. I know he's in here. He's just he's got a lot of hiding places. There he is. Um, there's my prize male. So that's what I'm breeding for. That caudal fin, the tail fin with that orange that goes all the way to the end on the top and the bottom. So this is perfection for me. Um, the one to the left, or the one up top there, this guy is not quite perfect. Now, he's perfectly well, um, and he's fine to sell and everything. He, he's a Santa Maria, and he's better than most of them out there. But as you see, the orange on the tail doesn't go quite to the tips. Um, so I'm holding back anywhere it does to uh, in breeding for that. Now that the strain's kind of locked in, I'm breeding for that ideal caudal fin. These are Bennett NSA. Um, they're uh, mouth brooding wild type betta. I think they're fantastic fish. These are rock solid. I've sold a lot of them. Everyone's had good luck with them as far as I can tell. I think there's been maybe one loss the whole time. Um, out of the whole group, only two came in with any problems and they're getting better. So they, they've recovered and they're doing well. One of them came in with a damaged eye. Of course, that won't get better. And one of them came in a little bit skinny, but that's, that's all getting taken care of. The rest of them are rock solid and been, been doing absolutely great. So. I've sold all the obvious males out of the group, so if you uh, purchase them, they're going to be unsexed. There's still some males in here, but um, they're not, uh, some of these are, are not full grown yet, and so I'm not quite able to sex the males. I don't know this fish well enough to sex it unless the male's in breeding color, so I can't, I can't select males unless they're in breeding color, and they're not right now. So if you want a breeding group, um, get a group and I'll send you you know a few that I think are males and a few that I think are females but please forgive me if if it's not perfect just because they're hard to sex for me anyway unless they're fully colored up down here another tank of beta cochina um, we already kind of did an in-depth on that so I won't I won't pause too long on this tank but beautiful little wild type beta this is my breeding rack uh, a bunch of five and a half gallon aquariums now I've been super busy <laughs> for a few months now. The, um, the, the business is taking off and so I haven't had a lot of free time to uh, dedicate to breeding. So there's not a lot in here but I'll show you what I do have. 
These are little gems. These are hard to find and I'm thrilled to show them to you. This is a spike tail Um I forget how to say the, uh, the genus name, <laughs> but uh, the species name on these is Dei. And they're a great little gourami, almost like a cross between a gourami and a betta that comes out of India. Really unique colors on these guys. Just fantastic little fish that are super hard to get. Anytime I can get them, I do. Um, anytime I see them, I get them. But I've only been successful a couple times. They're, they're hard to get. Next tank over, there's some guppies in here. And the main thing in here, which we're not going to see because they'll be hiding in the back, are... Uh, it's a male bed of rubra, but he's going to be back in that pot, so we're not going to see him. Going to go down low here real quick. This is a killifish. This is Fundalopanchax cinnamoensis. Um, I know the location, but I don't know it off the top of my head. I'd have to look it up. Um, there's three in here. I can tell that guy's a little freaked out from the camera. Here's another one up here. That's a female. And... Uh, they kind of hide a lot in this tank because of all those plants and stuff, so it's going to be a little bit hard to give you a great look at them. So we'll move on. Um, this is a nice male bed of NSA. See how he's in his breeding dress? He's got that bright blue throat and that bright blue line um, on his anal fin. Ah, come here, buddy. He's already sold, but um, and I, I kept him in here. Because what happens with these fish is, <laughs> if I don't separate the males from the females, they'll just breed. So this poor gentleman bought this fish a couple weeks ago, and then the, but the male had a mouthful of eggs. So I had to tell him, I'm sorry, I can't ship him right now because I don't want to stress the male out. So once that was done, um, I kept him separate, and I'm fattening him up, and I'll, I'll ship him out probably this Monday to that gentleman. But that's why he's separated. If I put him in with the group, um, he'll spawn and then I can't ship him, so. <laughs> yep. There's a whole bunch of better rubra in this tank, but we won't see them. And then the rest of these tanks are kind of uh, not much going on in them. This is live food. These are fruit fly cultures. They, I just started them yesterday, so they're not going to be blooming yet. There's maybe a dozen adults in there or so. Um, and then these are giant fruit fly cultures. I've had these cultures going for probably about a year and a half now and just every now and then you start a new one so that's what's going on here. They haven't populated yet. Then brine shrimp. Love baby brine shrimp. Works great. Okay here's the quarantine section. Let's go through it pretty quickly. Um, you'll see in here what you're gonna see is a lot of fish that have only been here for a little while so they're fresh imports so they might look stressed. You might see some sickness um, but that's why they're in here. Here I can medicate them and take care of them and get them ready to move to the main fish room where I can finish getting them healthy so that I can sell them to you. Uh, I hold all my fish at least two weeks before I sell them. They're in here for a week to get medicated and stabilized from the stress of being imported or shipped to me. And so I can keep an eye on them and see if they have anything going on. And then they're in the other tanks without medicines, um, or without antibiotics anyway, for another week just to make sure that they're doing okay and to fatten them up. And then I'll sell them. So that's why I have this quarantine system. And you'll notice some of the water's like green and stuff. That's, that's antibiotics in the water. They color it green. And uh, yeah, but I'll, I'll show you what's in here. The first thing is these. I held these back. These are some uh, high fin red eye, red sword tails, and I held them back. I'm hoping they breed, but I don't know. They're a tough ones, so I don't know how long they'll hold them, but I've had them a while. So far, no joy. I think I've had them for six weeks. No babies yet, but we'll see. So that's the only fish in here that isn't undergoing a quarantine. These are a, a great little earth eater cichlid from South America. These are from Paraguay and Uruguay and I'm sorry uh, Uruguay and Argentina and so they like it cooler so this is Gymnogeophagus balzeri and it the males get a big old hump on their head it kind of looks like an oranda like a goldfish in oranda's hump 
it's not bright red or anything, but it's that kind of same kind of big kind of jelly-like thing looking thing. Um, and they like it cool. So it, you can keep these down in the 50s. Um, in fact, to trigger them to spawn, you often have to take the temperature down to the low 60s or 50s and then bring it up to the high 60s, low 70s to trigger them to spawn because um, down in Uruguay and Argentina, there's it's more temperate than tropical. So if you want a neat kind of geophagus type cichlid and want something that can be kept cooler, these are a great fish for you. They're just babies right now, so they don't have the color and they don't have the nuchal hump or anything, but a really unique cichlid and I'm glad to get them. Getting fish out of Argentina and Uruguay is very difficult. They don't have the infrastructure there to like they do in Brazil and Colombia and Peru and stuff. So um, I'm thrilled to be able to get these. All right, next tank over. These are a neat killifish. These are Aplicylus blockii, which is similar to Aplicylus dei, but stays small. This is pretty much a nano fish. This is gonna top out at maybe an inch and a half. And uh, I absolutely love these guys, like I do all killifish. Up here is another killifish. This is uh, Aplicylus panchax, and this is the orange form. So if you look at this guy, you'll see bright orange on the anal fin, on the dorsal fin, and the caudal fin, and it's edged in black, which gives a nice contrast. So to me, it's one of the prettiest strains of the panchax. These guys came in super rough. They were shaky, they were shimmying, they were clamped up. Um, luckily, they're stabilizing, I, I can tell, just by looking at how they are now versus how they were then. Um, it's going to take a little more work, though, before they're settled in and colored up, but, but this guy's kind of, he came in, in in better shape than the rest, so he's, he's already pretty much getting his color in and stuff, but he'll get even prettier as he settles in more. Anyway, Aplicylus Panchax. Look at these! I'm excited about these. These are red flamingo guppies. I brought these in because I, I don't have a nice red guppy for you guys. I've got blue turquoise, which is fantastic. And the nice thing about the blue turquoise strain is it doesn't have red in it, uh, which is difficult. Red's the dominant gene, so often you have to work really hard to get red out of your blue strains. And I've got a, a nice bright yellow in my Cobra Endler strain. I didn't have anything red, so got in these, I think, fantastic uh, red flamingo guppies. And I don't think I've lost one. Like, they've been rock solid. Um, nothing going on in here. In here, these are my favorite geophagus. Um, these are geophagus wine milleri. And they're just little right now, so they don't have the color, but they're absolutely stunning when they get big. Unfortunately, they sent me two that had a lot of damage on the tail fin, this one and this one. I'm working hard to try to nurse them back to health. Um, I'm using antibiotics to try to prevent that caudal from getting infected, but once the tail gets that damaged, it can often be fatal because it, it gets into the body of the fish. Um, they can take a lot of damage to the fin, but once it actually gets into the meat of the fish, it, it's hard, but I'm trying. Good news is, I mean, that's the bad news, and that should never happen. They shouldn't send me fish like that. But the good news is everyone else is in great shape. In fact, I'm about to move all except for the two with the damaged tails to their uh, kind of more permanent 75 gallon here. Um, hold them for another week, and then they'll be ready for sale. When these are fully colored, they're stunning. They get nice, long extensions on the fin, and beautiful, beautiful coloration. So. Uh, if you want to check those out, Geophagus Wine Milleri, it's worth a Google. I don't have any adults to show you, I've just got these little guys, but cool little earth eater, very peaceful, nice community fish. These are rosy loaches, been trying to get these in forever. Tiny little nano loach, I don't know if they even get over an inch, they're little guys. The males, once they settle in and color up, will turn a bright rosy color, which is why they get the name Rosy Loach. Um, these guys are already eating Rapashi. I don't feed a lot in this system, but I'm about to move these to a more permanent tank, so uh, the day I do that, usually in the morning I'll try feeding the fish, and that's kind of the last test to see if the fish is healthy and, and feeding and, and doing well. 
So if they feed, then later that day, I'll move them to their new home. So these guys are gonna get moved later. Um, but they're eating rapashi, which is fantastic. There were some contaminants in the bag too, these little guys. These are um, like the Celestial Pearl Danio, but this is the emerald version. So I, I forget what the actual name is, but they're like the Celestial Pearl Danio, but they're the emerald one. All right, up here we have some Uwaru. Um, love these guys, they like a lot of vegetables. The adults get this beautiful bold pattern, this big black kind of uh, patch on them, which contrasts nice with the rest of the fish. These are juveniles, so right now they're kind of just brown, and it's, it's kind of hard to see any color in this murky tank with all the meds in the water. But, um, but trust me, they're gonna turn into some impressive looking fish. Um, they're small right now though, which is good because they ship a lot better when they're small. And so that, that's how I want to get them and sell them is small. They'll ship better and acclimate better. But I'm excited about these guys. And yeah, they're, they're the only other fish that I know of, at least in freshwater, that feeds their young off their own body. So they're like a discus. When they spawn, they, they, they secrete this uh, mucus on their body that the baby fish eat. So the baby fish actually graze off the parents until they're big enough to kind of fend for themselves. So it's a really neat reproductive behavior. These, I finally got some chili rasboras. Um, they're in the most scratched up tank in the fish room. So they're gonna be a little hard to see. They aren't colored up fully yet by any means, but they're starting to settle in a little bit and get a little bit of color. They were just brown, brown, brown a few days ago, but they're starting to settle in. And these guys ate rapashi today do, which is a great sign, so I'll move them to their more permanent tank as soon as I'm done this video. But chili rasboras, boros brigitte. I've been trying to get these forever. I order them all the time and they always send me something else, which is fine. The other things are pretty too and I like them, but um, this time they actually came in as Boraris Brigitte, so I'm thrilled about that. Okay, still with me? I know this is a long one. This is, this is a big, <laughs> there's a lot of fish here to show you. So we're gonna go back now and I'll show you um, the bottom level of all of the 75 gallon aquariums and then we'll wrap up. So thanks for being with me. I know this is a long video. It's gonna get dark here as I walk over. Ah! Um, okay, so we're going back here. This is kind of where we started and then we looked at these thread fin rainbows up here, but we didn't come down here. Okay, so these are, this is a high flow tank. So I have a, oops, sorry. I have a couple air stones in there to create a lot of flow so you'll see all the oxygen going up and the turbulence of the surface. This is where I keep fish that like high oxygen. So for example, these guys, these are Stiphodon, I think Stiphodon ornatus, a few Julie Corys in there just cause. And there's quite a few of these little guys in here. And then I also have, I love this fish. I've only got one left. Let's see if I can get it. There we go. It's a gold line loach. Never seen them before or since. Really, really cool little fish. Um, they're out of China, and that's all I really know about them. They're very similar to a panda loach, but they get bright gold on them, and they have a very different pattern. So I don't know if they're a subspecies of panda loach or a special location of panda loach or, or color variant or if they're a, a separate species I have no idea but they're really cool and then back there let's zoom in on this guy this is a really special fish this is a rhinogobia species um oh, sorry I'm shaking and of course right now I can't remember the species um is it Cotopunctatus? I can't remember, but it's not its not the white cheek goby that, that we usually get for Rhinogobius. It's, uh, it's a completely different species and I'm blanking on the name. Anyway, sorry about that. I'm still acclimating these guys. I've only had them for about a week now. Um, but, yeah. Oh, hopefully you can see them okay. 
All right, let's move on to the next tank, oh, which is this one. First, a bunch of albino Corys, <laughs> Corydoras Aeneas. But then, look at all these. Look at all these exclamation point Rasboras. These are Bororis species. Um, they're commonly called exclamation point Rasboras, and they are doing fantastic. Often you'll see Rasboras of these Bororis type, and they'll be emaciated and you know shaky and not doing well. Check these out. I mean, these are rock solid. They're fat. They're happy. They're doing great. And then in here I also have, check these out, Black Tiger Darios. There's a male on the left and a female on the right. These are fantastic. So these are like Dario Dario, or the Scarlet Battis, but, um, but different color. Different species, really. And they're doing great for me. They love, there's another one in the plants there. Here's, here's one right here. They absolutely love this Java moss. They also like hanging out in pipes, so hang on. Try to get up close to this one. Sorry about any uh, seasickness. <laughs> I'm really trying to keep the camera steady. Check this out. Oops. Come on, focus. Oh, did it not focus? Well, that didn't work, but anyway, gorgeous little fish. Kind of like another flavor of Dario Dario, the Scarlet Battis, I guess. Now, something with the Dario is that you should be aware of is I usually don't sell fish unless they're eating flake foods and pellet foods and stuff and rapashi and stuff because I want to make it easy on you when you get them to feed them and care for them. But the Darios are a, a genus where I've never had luck with that. Um, they eat frozen food just fine, and they eat live food, but I've never gotten them to eat live, I'm sorry, to eat frozen, oh jeez. I'm gonna restart that. Okay, that's me rewinding. But I've never gotten them to eat uh, flakes or pellets. So if you keep these guys, just be aware, you're gonna have to buy some frozen brine shrimp and frozen blood worms and stuff like that uh, in, in to, to keep them. They love baby brine shrimp. I mean, that's a favorite. But check that out. Sorry we're spending so much time in this tank, but I really like it. Uh, the mix of these black tiger Darios with those exclamation point rasboras in here is, is fantastic. And then up here, um, this is for Shixthes flavopinus, which is a neat little blue-eye uh, killifish that only gets maybe an inch, maybe an inch and a quarter of the biggest, biggest, biggest one. No, not even under an inch and a quarter. Bright blue eye, little surface dwelling killifish from Nigeria. And you never see these. These are very, very rare. Okay, next tank over. We're gonna look at this tank from a distance and then we'll go in. We're pretty far away from this tank and look at how those fish are just shiny. Those are platinum half beaks. This is the main tank of platinum half beaks. And then I've got some albino quarries on the bottom just to keep the bottom, you know, clean. Um, I just absolutely love this fish. I, I don't have enough good things to say about it. It stays small. It's got that beautiful platinum coloration. They eat flakes and pellets and stuff just fine. They're, they're pretty much a surface feeder though. They really do like it up at the surface more. Um, and so feed floating foods and they'll do great. Yeah, absolutely stunning. Love that fish. Got a couple more of these high fin red eyed red cauliflower sword tails in here too. Um, which I'll list soon. I'm just, I hold them a little longer to make sure that everything's okay because they're like 40, sorry, I'm chasing them around. Hopefully you're not getting seasick. They're like 45 bucks each, so, and they're, they can be a little more delicate, so I take some extra time with them, but hopefully I'll be able to list them soon. All right, oh, let's go over here. Another cool killifish out of Nigeria and one you don't ever see. This is Aplicolichthys spilwatchin. They've got a bright orange eye. Let's see if I can, um, that just glows. It's super bright and orange. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I need to get some water. I've been talking for, geez, an hour now on this video, but the males also get this nice iridescence on the uh, anal fin and the dorsal fin and the caudal fin with those stripe pattern. 
These are super hard to get. I've tried to get them many, many times, and what they always sent me instead was rice fish. So I finally brought these in on my own so I could get them in. Uh, nice, kind of surface dwelling lamp eye killifish. And also from Nigeria are these. These are wild yellow form cribs. So these are uh, the, the common species of crib, but the yellow form, and they're not, you know, the mass bred uh, variety. These are actually wild fish. And you can tell the difference. If you look at the, the fins on that thing, it's just brilliant orange on the tail fin and the dorsal fin on that male. I mean, it's not like a subdued yellow, it's a brilliant orange. And then check this female out. The females of this species are even prettier than the males as far as I'm concerned. That's a female with that bright kind of pink belly, and the, the nice black contrast on the dorsal. Anyway, wild yellow form curbensis, absolutely beautiful. Um, I just think they're stunning. Okay. Next one over. This is pretty much an empty tank, just waiting for some stuff to come out of quarantine. Has a couple uh, fish up top, just to, you know, kind of keep the cycle going. But other than that, it's empty. All right. Love this fish as well. This is Sudamugil forcatus, which is the forktail rainbow, or the pom pom blue eye. And I don't know if it's going to come through. Most of these are still fairly small, but bright yellow contrasted with a, a deep black on the unpaired fins. And then the pectoral fins um, are tipped in bright yellow. So it looks like cheerleaders waving pom-poms around as they swim. So I like calling them the pom-pom blue eye, but there's also a few holdbacks from the Santa Maria Endler line in there, just some males. I, I pull young males that I think have potential and put them in here to grow them out before I decide whether I'm going to add them to my breeding project or not. Anyway, I love this tank. And these guys, again, stay up in kind of the upper third of the tank, so the bottom's pretty clear, so I'm probably going to put some of those rosy loaches down here on the bottom as well. Um, this tank has a lot of fish in it, but uh, it's kind of odds and ends as I sell out a species like, I'll, I'll put a bunch in a, a tank, I'll sell them, there'll be a couple left. I'll put in a new species, I'll sell them all, there'll be a couple left of that, and eventually you get these odds and ends tanks. So, this has some better rubra in it, um, all females, unfortunately. Some Limia uh, perugia in it, some rice fish, some ember tetras, just, just a few things to keep the cycle going until I, I put a bunch of new fish in here. So, nothing much to see here. Here's a better rubra. Just females though, um, I'm, I only have, I think, the one male left. Okay, next tank over. These are fantastic, and you're probably not ever going to see these anywhere else. I mean, there's Congo Tetras in there, those you'll see elsewhere. But these, these are African Pencil Tetras, um, and they are never available. They're, I've never seen them before. I had to bring these in myself from Nigeria. I like them because they're kind of like the Africa's version of a pencil fish almost. The males get bright red in the anal fin. I'm sorry, the dorsal fin and the caudal fin. And um, yeah, they're just a really neat fish that you can that you're probably never going to see again, honestly. So if if you're into rare kerosens, rare tetras, this is your chance. I don't know when else you're going to have. A, the ability to get that fish. Then there's these strange fish right there behind the Congo Tetras, which I have no idea what it is. There's like, I have like three of them in this tank. No clue. Just came in with the uh, other fish. There were a few in the bag. <laughs> no idea. And then this is another little contaminant that came. Uh, I think that's South American, though. I don't, th I don't think that's from Africa. That came in a different shipment from a different wholesaler, and I just put them in here because I thought they'd get along well. Um, that's pretty much it for that tank, although there's a, a few uh, Limia nigra fasciata, a few humpback Limia in there. Um, here's the main colony of Limia nigra fasciata, the humpback Limia. This is an absolute favorite. I cannot produce enough of these. I mean, look at all these babies. They're gorgeous. They're hardy. 
they're unique and they're rare and I, I just sell the heck out of these. This is my most profitable tank in the fish room and I don't even, um, most of my tanks I import fish and then resell them after I get them all healthy and, and sized up and everything. Um, these I don't. This is a big breeding colony and they just churn out babies and people buy them like crazy. This is my most profitable tank. Humpback Limias or Limia niger fasciata. And you can see why. I mean, this is a hard fish to get, but look how cool it is. So these are closely related to like platies and stuff. Um, they're, they're the same kind of general group as that. They have the uh, gonopodium, or posilid. I think I'm saying that right, but they've got kind of this gold color with that black striping and they're, and a lot of spangling on them, which probably won't show up in the video, but that's, uh, that's my colony and it just churns out babies like crazy. All right, you still with me? I know this is a super long one. We're gonna go here now. Look at the bottom tanks on, on this side. So these are another special fish. This is a killifish. It's a lampi out of Nigeria. This is um, Luxothalmus is the species name. And the genus on these is, uh, I think it's Poropanchax, Luxothalmus. I get Poropanchax and Congo Panchax uh, cross-wired in my brain sometimes. But the unfortunate thing about these is most of their color is in, in this really bright neon green iridescence, they're called the neon green lamp eye, but that doesn't show up in pictures and it doesn't show up on video. But in person I'm looking at these right now and the males are bright neon green, they're absolutely stunning. They also get an extended dorsal fin and anal fin and get like a lemon yellow anal fin, but mostly it's that bright bright green which I hope you're at least getting a hint of on this video, but it, it really never shows up, <laughs> so, <laughs> oh well. A um, couple random like Aphiosimian Australi golds in here, a uh, couple Gardneri P82s in here, um, but mostly it's those Luxothalmus. This is a bunch of guppies, these are, or endlers, sorry. These are, again, some holdbacks from the Santa Maria Endler Project. Look at this guy, see how that bright that orange is all the way down his caudal? He's a holdback breeder. Um, because of how beautiful he is. And then the, the jewel of this, and I'm about to sell out of these, so I'm glad I've still got a few to show you, are these. Now I know they don't look like much right now because they're kind of small, but these are Samurai Garamis. They are one of the rarest chocolate type Garamis and the prettiest. The females get brilliant coloration. Oddly enough, in this species, it's the female that gets pretty colors and initiates spawning and all that. And it's the male that holds the eggs in his mouth until they hatch and takes care of them. So most species it's the opposite. So the males get the bright color and initiate the breeding. In this species, it's the females that get the color and initiate the breeding. But take a little time here because that is a rare fish. Super hard to find. And uh, it's I've, I've sold the last group of them, so I'll ship these out on Monday. Oh man, and I had a couple in here that did color up. They were big enough that they a couple females did color out, and man, they were gorgeous. All right, next tank over. This is another variety of chocolate garami. It's a, it's a more common one, but I like them a lot. I like chocolate garamis, so that's why I have a couple varieties of them. That dark, dark chocolate with that kind of white striping on them. Um, and these guys are not delicate. I've done the work to make them healthy. And uh, they're eating flakes, they're eating pellets, they're eating frozen food, they're eating live food. They're rock solid and doing absolutely great. So, yep, chocolate gouramis along with the inevitable guppy. <laughs> All right, next tank over. Oh, we'll go this way, sorry. Okay, this is a 30 gallon, not a 75, but this has some hyphen paleotis in it. These are sold, so unfortunately I can't give these to you if you want them. I'll send these out Monday, but look how fat and happy these are. Absolutely stunning for a, for a quarry. This is, these are good looking fish. Um, and then in here, the crown jewel, which I'll try to find. There we go. 
Uh, can you see them in the weeds? This is a highway catfish. Super, super rare. In fact, I'm the only one that I know of in the United States that has these. Hopefully it'll come this way. I've got three of them left. Sold most of them. But this is fantastic. They used to be called Pseudobagris trilineatus. Now they're called like Tachysurus, I believe is the genus. I mean, you might never see this fish before. This is the first time I've seen them. The only time I've ever been able to get them. Um, they're not cheap. They're 50 bucks each, but that's because they're super rare and they cost me a pretty penny, trust me. And they're out of China. They like it cooler. So, um, yeah, if you have a a tank and, and you want to keep a, a fish that likes it a little cooler, that's a good one for you. Oh, excuse me. Okay, next tank over. These are my Cobra Endler strain and I really like this line. It's a, it's a pretty consistent line. As you can see the color and, and kind of body coloration is pretty consistent. There's a little inconsistency in the caudal fin. Some have like a leer tail, some have a, a, a kind of upper sword extension and some don't but color and pattern wise these are pretty rock solid and they're stunning these glow from across the room so this is a nice strain and I'm proud to have them you'll also see quite a few glow light Danios in there the the Chopre and you'll see a couple of the uh, what do they call them Burmese gold spotted Danio it's it's the tin Winnie in there as well. And then one random zebra danio, of course, that came in with the shipment. A couple Siamese algae eaters, and that is that tank. One of my favorite tanks. There's just so much color and happiness and personality in here. It's great. All right, these are special. <clears throat> these are Pseudomugil uh, Signifer. The Pacific Blue Eye is what they call them. Really unique blue eye, and they get when they, they flash to each other and display, they're absolutely stunning. Ignore the uh, a couple of Pseudomugo Fricata Forktail Rainbow in here. Those came in the same bag. Um, sometimes wholesalers mix things up. Luckily, they have such a different fin shape and stuff that they're easy to tell apart. Even the females I can tell apart from the uh, signifers, so that's not a problem. I've got males and females of these uh, Pseudomugo signifers, and so I can get you uh, breeding colony without any problem if that's what you want. I can get pairs easily. So the, the males get that kind of orange color um, and when they display they're absolutely stunning. Then I've got a ton of Siamese algae eaters in here. This is kind of the tank I sell Siamese algae eaters out of. The, the ones in the other tanks I don't really sell. They're kind of in there to you know keep the algae under control. But Yep, and then some albino quarries, Corridors Aeneas. So that's this tank, and I, I really like this tank a lot. So, yeah. Oh, do I have one down? Oh, no. Well, one's down, but, I mean, there's a couple hundred of them in here, and they've been, they've been hardy for a long time, so I don't think there's anything going on in there. I think just one random one. Nothing going on in here. I kind of reset this tank, um, and I've got to repopulate it. This is a cool tank. This is the third tank that has uh, platinum half beaks in it, which I love. A couple random guppies, as always. And then, check these out. Hopefully I can get close enough that I can get the glare off. These are African glass catfish. You'll see lots of glass catfish in the hobby, but they're the Asian glass catfish, which isn't only a different species. It's a completely different genus, and I think a completely different, what's the next one up, class or whatever. It's uh, there's what Cyrilliforms and then the other kind of catfish. Um, they so this evolved completely differently than the Asian catfish. They're not at all closely related. So these are midwater planktonic feeders. So they they go around in groups and they have their feelers out. And whenever anything touches their feelers, it's edible. Little particles of food and stuff. They suck it into their mouth. That's how they feed. So. They're not a bottom-dwelling catfish, like Corridors or something like that. They kind of sw swim mid-water, but in the lower level of the aquarium, I guess. And uh, they like being in a group, and they eat flakes and pellets and everything. Frozen foods, all that stuff. Not picky eaters at all. They come in really shaky, 
but I've had these for a few months now and they're rock solid. So African glass catfish. This tank, oh, I'm so excited to show you guys these. Oh, sorry, I gotta sit down. These are Betta bellica. These are a large bubble nest breeder. They're a wild type Betta. They're absolutely fantastic and they're really pretty. Most of their color though is in that kind of iridescent pearline um, and it's kind of just this really delicate, classy pattern that they have. So I'm gonna try to pick that up for you. I don't know how much it'll show up on camera. That kind of color and pattern is really doesn't show up on camera very well. But uh, in person, these are absolutely stunning. Where are you? There you are. Does that show up? Like each each scale is is kind of this brilliant little emerald color on them. Now these I, I can't sex really well. I mean I, I know this one's a male, but um, I think like that one's a female, but maybe that's gonna develop into a male. And I think that one's a female, but maybe that's a young male. So if you I can't guarantee the sexes on these, I'll do my best. If you want to breed them, get a group, and I'll do my best to get you both sexes. But Betta Bellica, cool wild type Betta that is stunning and, and not very common in the hobby at all. There's a couple uh, Geophagus wine milleri back there, but I didn't. I'm not going to sell those. I, those are holdbacks because they they're a little bit like they're a little deformed. The uh, spine where it attaches to the tail has a little bump in it, so. Um, these are just living their life in here because, uh, yeah, they're healthy. It's not their fault, but, uh, yeah, they're just not quite, quite the right shape. And that's, you know, that's just part of being in this business. Uh, not every fish you get is perfect. And if you're a, uh, you know, honest, I guess, seller, or, you know, if you're a, someone who cares about their customers and stuff, you're you're gonna pick the good ones and not sell the stuff that isn't right. Man, look at that. So I know we're spending a lot of time on this tank, but I love these fish and they're just not something you see every day. Oh, he's displaying, that's awesome. A little bit anyway. Okay. <clears throat> these are one of the most underrated barbs ever. These are clown barbs, and look at how happy that is. Like, big happy group of them. Look at that color, look at that personality. They're fantastic. A big group of these, I, that's, I don't know. They're just fun, and no one knows about these fish. No one keeps this fish, so I've got them. If you want some clown barbs, this is your chance. There's one random male Odessa barb in there that you've probably seen. He's gorgeous, but uh, these do best in groups, and I mean they will chew on plants, although some people keep them in planted aquariums just fine. I would classify these as semi-aggressive. They, they aren't going to like purposely hurt other fish. Um, if you don't have a big enough group of them though, they can sometimes uh, kind of hash it out with each other a bit until they settle their, their hierarchy, I guess. So I, I, a big group, 10 to 12 of these is probably best or more. But uh, they can definitely go in a community tank. They're not any more, they're less aggressive than tiger barbs and things. They're just bigger. So they have kind of that speed and that uh, they get to the food really quick and all that. So you don't keep them with anything delicate or really small. But um, yeah, if you have fish that can hold their own, these are a fantastic addition that you never see. All right. These are the blue turquoise. Oh, sorry, I'm scooting along the floor here. Let me get in position. <laughs> These are the blue turquoise guppies, which are a fantastic strain. And the, the main thing about these guys is they don't have that red. Most of the blue strains have a lot of red in them, and these have avoided that. So look how pretty these are. Isn't that gorgeous? All right, now look at them. Like, they're gorgeous, but now look at this. From above, they glow like neon. From above, they are just, I mean, they're pretty from the side, right? But then you take a look from up here, and your jaw drops. 
So if you have a, I don't know, a, if you're doing some summer tubbing or you have a little pond or, you know, flower pot or whatever that you keep fishing and you, you're looking at those fish from the top, these blue turquoise guppies from the top are even prettier than from the side. We've also got some, uh, this is my favorite platy. These are neon calico yellow platies or neon yellow calico platies. And they glow from across the room. They're absolutely stunning. I've got to hurry, my battery's running low. Last tank here. This is uh, Procatopus aberrant, a great lampi killifish from Nigeria. Pretty hard to find. All the color in these pretty much is iridescence. So you might get little hints of how much blue and red and orange and yellow they have, but it's all iridescent. So these are gonna show up as brown or tan fish on camera, unfortunately, but in person, they have a lot of color. Uh, these are Procatopus aberrans, and the, the location is Port Harcourt. Sorry about that, my battery bit the dust, but we're back, so anyway, Thanks for being on this tour. If you made it this far, like I wonder how many people are gonna make it to the end. Like no one's gonna make it to the end. But if you're still here, wow. Thanks for being with me to the end. Thanks for uh, hanging out. Hope you like that tour of the fish room. Um, I'm pretty proud of it. I have to say, I'm proud of this thing. I've, I've got some cool fish in here and I've been able to get some stuff that's hard to get and hard to get healthy and all that and it's going well, so. I'm proud of this operation and I'm happy to show it to you. If you like this stuff, if you wouldn't mind subscribing, liking, sharing, hitting notification bells, all that schmaz that us YouTubers are always begging you to do, if you feel so inclined, I would invite you to do that stuff. And remember, all this stuff is for sale at dancefish.com. That's how I make a living, so I've got to <laughs> mention it. And um, if you have fish to sell or fish supplies or shrimp or whatever, freshwater or marine, check out getgills.com. It's a great place where you can uh, list your extra stuff for sale. And it's a, a neat kind of community as well. So that's it. Hope you like this. Until next time, have a good one. Bye-bye.